All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. Today, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Lions. This is my first video of the year on them. The last time we talked was the NFC Championship game, but it's a new season, fresh start, and the Lions got off to a good one against the Los Angeles Rams at home defeating them 26 to 20 in overtime. I just want to say this off the rip. I do think the NFL should change the overtime rules in the regular season. I know the playoffs, you know, Super Bowl, all that. But let's give both the teams the ball, give them a chance. It would just be way more exciting. But obviously the Lions can't control that. They got the ball first. They won the toss and they marched right down the field and scored. David Montgomery, 17 carries for 91 yards and a touchdown. Jameer Gibbs, 11 of 40 and a touchdown. And the weapons for Detroit, really outside of Jamison Williams, were quiet. Sam Laporta, 4 for 45. Amon Ross St. Brown, 3 for 13. The fact they were able to win this game with that is pretty incredible, but the run game, 31 of 163 in total. Jamison Williams was my biggest takeaway from this game. If the Lions want to win this Super Bowl this year, they're going to need this Jamison Williams every single night. He had five receptions for 121 yards and a touchdown, and he also added in a carry for 13 yards on the ground. I mean, JMO is so fast and electric. There was this one play action pass for the Lions. They shifted the line to the right. They had JMO go across the field and they hit him for a big gain. Of course, one on one against Tredavious White. White ended up holding him and he should have just tackled him because he's not going to be able to catch JMO. I mean, I don't know if there's a corner that's going to be able to do that. I mean, he is so fast. And JMO, yeah, he just basically caught the ball and walked into the end zone for his first touchdown of the year. Jared Goff had an interesting game, just 217 yards passing, a touchdown, an interception. I think you got to give credit to the Rams defense. A lot of the times people just blame the quarterback, but this was just a great defensive performance for the Rams. I certainly didn't see this coming. Uh, no Ernest Jones, of course. Aaron Donald retired. This unit, they went out there led by guys like Byron Young. Troy Reader was incredible. Jared Verse had his first sack. Uh, the secondary played well for the Rams too. I mean, outside of that, absolute just uh, unfortunate you know, beep uh, one-on-one white against will uh, jmo that secondary was great they had an interception and they just kept the ball in front of them and golf was only 18 of 28 so it was a big time performance for the rams defense but the issue for the rams is that offensively they shot themselves in the foot they went down deep into detroit territory twice and they didn't come away with points uh, you know going for it um, which is great but you know you got to pick that up especially fourth and short man you just got to pick that up and i don't have an issue going for it because the lions we know how good offensively they are so and you're in their building you know you got to score touchdowns you know matthew stafford i thought had good game 317 yards a touchdown a pick the pick was in the red zone which was an awful one he didn't see it was a uh, kirby joseph made a play i mean it, it looked you know man coverage but you had safety help and it was just a it was a very really a rare play by Stafford. I mean, the Rams didn't have a single turnover in the red zone last year. In their first game, they get one via yeah, Stafford. He was under pressure all night. Aiden Hutchinson was the best player on the field. I went with Jamal on the thumbnail just because I'm excited to see what he can do. And I was a big fan of him coming out of Alabama. But Aiden Hutchinson, it wasn't even debatable, was the best player on the field. I believe he had 11 pressures at the top of my head. And it took chip blocks. Even chip blocks weren't even really working on Hutchinson. He was still getting home. But they, the Rams had to slow him down. What they would do is they would motion a player to his side. And then they'd hit him with a chip block off the edge. And then they would send the player out to catch the ball. That was like the only way the Rams were able to generate any offense at, at some points in this game. Because they couldn't run the ball. 23 for 83 and that's my thing for going up against the lions is you want to run the ball because that takes the lions offense off of the field but the lions are an elite run defense so good luck doing that i mean i think detroit honestly has a great chance of going to the super bowl this year last year they should have if they had continued to run the ball in the second half they definitely would have of course they went for it a couple of times in fourth down drops fumbles like things like that just the lions beating themselves man it sucked but it's a new season, like I said, that's the past. And Detroit clearly has the talent to beat anyone in football. I mean, they start off week one in Arrowhead last year, beat the Chiefs, and then they get all the way to the NFC Championship and go up against the Niners in Santa Clara and have an amazing first half. Uh, but you know, this time around, I think the Lions are in a much better situation. They had a good draft, they had a good off season, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do the rest of the season. But 
In terms of the Rams, I mean, I'm looking at Puka Nakua, who caught four balls for 35 yards, ended up getting injured. He was placed on the IR. Cooper Cup, 14 for 110 and a touchdown. The Cup was incredible in this game. I mean, 21 targets is just absurd. Tyler Johnson had a 63-yard catch. Unbelievable to just stop it and dime with your momentum and be able to do that. Kobe Parkinson had a good game. Demarcus Robinson had a good game. Uh, Kyron Williams was extremely quiet, 18 of 50 and a touchdown. If he didn't find the end zone, I mean, it would have been a very, very disappointing game for him. And he's also moved to special teams, taking punt returns. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into fantasy because this isn't a fantasy football video. But yeah, I definitely stayed away from Kyron in my draft. But that's all I'll say. Um, in terms of what's next for the Lions, they're going to be taking on in week two. I haven't looked at their schedule all year. So they're going to be taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's going to be a very fun game i think it's going to be high scoring this was you know, 26 to 20 is not low scoring but this game just seemed low scoring there was some big plays some big drives that, that made it seem like it was a little bit more offense than it was but i do think that game in detroit taking on the bucks is going to be high scoring i mean i could see that game getting into the high 30s i, I really could There'll be a lot of offense in that one week three at arizona week four versus seattle whenever the seahawks and the lions get together it's always fun high scoring overtime games looking forward to that early bye week for the lions in week five come off of that against the dallas cowboys we know what happened the last time the lions took on the cowboys just a very bad call but um yeah that's that's really what i took away from the game is it was just a very it was a very good football game there wasn't a lot of high offense which for being a youtuber of course that that's more fun to talk about but this was just two teams scrapping being physical and ended up coming out with the lions but you also one thing that we've got to address is the lions were down three points late in this game they had the ball and golf found sam laporta across the middle of the field but then there was a hit or an unnecessary roughness call that moved the ball 15 yards and that got the lions closer in the field goal range just certain plays like that are now, what win and lose you games? I mean, for the Rams, you score a late touchdown to Cooper Cup. You have momentum. You just need a stop and you win this game and you don't get it. So I'm sure that's something that the Rams have looked at and um, are very frustrated with. But yeah, Detroit, I didn't think they played anywhere close to their, their best game. Uh, you could say the same for the Rams, but like the Lions, I, I just didn't think the Lions honestly played the best in this game. I mean, they ran the ball well, you know, defensively they did good, but their passing offense was non-existent. And that's what makes the Lions so unstoppable, is how balanced of an offense they are. Jared Goff was second in the league last year in passing yards, and then their run game is as good as it gets with David Montgomery, who came over, of course, and Jameer Gibbs. And now they're getting Jamison Williams involved. You know, Khalif Raymond, who plays special teams for them, is very quick and athletic. I mean, the Lions just have so many weapons. I think their biggest weapon, arguably, is Ben Johnson, who is interviewing for head coaching jobs, you know, commanders and Seahawks in the offseason. He ends up coming back. So you have a guy who should be a head coach calling your plays. You have Dan Campbell. And then on the defensive side, you got Aaron Glenn. I haven't made a Lions video, I think, since June. So wow i mean it feels good to be back uh i mean it's it's wild because i only have two nfl jerseys one of them is puka nakua and the other one is a deandre swift lions jersey i went with swift over hutchinson isn't that hilarious man what a what a joke but um that's just that's why i don't buy nfl jerseys man they're so expensive and then like the player could get traded but it's a running back it's on me but aiden hutchinson man it was so fun watching this guy go to work i mean edges they're, they're so valuable because they can impact every single play I mean, that's, that's the, the beauty of, of an edge versus like a wide receiver or a running back is if you're coming off the edge, you can impact the play every single snap. And that's what Aiden Hutchinson did in this game. But also, you do have to give the Rams credit because Matthew Stafford threw for 317 yards. They did rush for 83, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's pretty, it's like, eh, it's, I don't know. It's like, it just wasn't that impressive for the Rams, but they didn't really go away from it, which is good. They still ran 23 times. And then, you know, Cooper Cup, like really Cooper, like a lot of these weapons were consistent, right? I mean, one, two, three, four, five, uh, like your fifth guy caught you know, 35 yards on four receptions. And Puka, you know, he obviously left early in this game and didn't come back. So, but the Lions, good start for them to find a way to win this game. Rams are a tough team. Sean McVay is no joke. He's won a Super Bowl. You could argue he's the best offensive mind in football. I don't even think anyone would. I'm not going to say they would disagree with that, but I mean, they could see an argument for it. And Matthew Stafford, 16th year Hall of Famer, Lions fans know him best. He started his career with, with Detroit. So but yeah, guys, peace.